no need. Can I turn it off? Okay. No, no, turn it off because I usually okay. shout a lot. So. All right. Uh, hey, how's it going? I, I will be not using a microphone. I usually shout, so... But if you don't hear me, please uh, just tell anything. And uh, yeah, there's my Twitter account. So like in the meanwhile, if you will see that stuff will not work, but I don't see anybody having here like a laptop with himself. So that's all right, Do doesn't matter. You'll see it later. So hey, I'm Victor. Uh, I'm one of the core developers of Shogun, which is a machine learning library for a long time now. Uh, I I joined the project when I was doing my PhD. Actually, like all the stuff I did in my, during my PhD, I, I contributed to this library, and ever since I just called up doing this thing. Uh, so we are run for a long, long time. It's open source for at least 10 years now, or 15 years. Uh, there's a problem that like it's written in C++, so people are having problem of like entering the barrier there. But anyhow, so uh, there are many good features there that you'll see. So we are like since around since '99, and uh, basically we are practitioners, like all of us, like core contributors in this, and and uh, and some younger, like we have many Google Summer Code students. Like I'm like the sixth year mentoring it. So uh, yeah, uh, we have what like Summer Code students were like. Four of them entered MIT after Shogun, two of them at CMU, and somebody at Stanford. So, like, yeah, we have a good, like, track record of people contributing to this. Then you just end up doing your research somewhere. And usually they leave because we are, like, a big, big library, and, and they just need a niche thing for themselves. Nonetheless, there are many libraries, many, many algorithms there. Uh, the problem is that like some of them are like not maintained anymore because it's like for genomic things. But then again, like you could use it, and there cu currently somebody picking it up. Some hackers, so we're C++ as is. Like we don't do everything in the core. We don't do any scripting languages, and you will see why later. Uh, and a scientist, as I said, I did my PhD. The two co to, to co two contributors, like the star founders, are did their own PhDs for that. So. Currently, we have like other core con core contributors as well doing th their PhDs over this. So it's all about that. We don't have any industrial funding. We just survive on Google Summer of Code and our own passion about it. And yeah, I'm I'm very hectic today. Sorry about this. In my company, like this is not my daily job. I just do it as a passion. For a week, we have like a crisis. So sorry, I just just gotta put here stuff. Please ask in the meanwhile if you have anything. I am more than happy to have an interactive thing going on here. So, and it's it, ideal is because we are fully open source. Uh, it's actually like it's a GPL3, so no BSD, no Apache thing. What if you use us, you have to contribute as, to back. Basically, that's it. So, like Linux, but like then again, currently we are, there's a pushing that we're gonna have like a BSD version of ourselves, but it's 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 a mess with the licensing and chasing down people of. You'll see later, like we have like 150 people contributing and chasing down them. That like getting the agreement that you can do this, it's it's not easy. So we're running on Linux, obviously, like all the Debian and Red Hat, there are Linux, whatever you want. Then OSX, Windows, FreeBSD, NetBSD, OpenBSD, and obviously your toaster as well, because we are C++. We don't care about the environment. And yes, I did test it with many embedded systems, including my phone. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's working nicely. Uh, <clears throat> so what is really, like, because like I've kept saying that it's a great thing and like it's a big thing and it's, we are old, but nobody hears us because like everybody's using XGBoost, everybody's using, uh, what's, what's that? yeah, deep learning is like a hip thing today. So like, yeah, everybody's like about deep learning. Uh, yeah, like just random note here that, uh, fun fact, uh, since 99, we are column-based, and if you do big data, you'll understand what that means. So yeah, it's it's not a new thing actually. Uh, so what do we are like? Like let's see like what are how you can describe us. So this is our statistics on Olo. Like currently, we ca cut down like the lines of codes to, to f just to 400,000, but it used to be half a million lines of code, 
Uh, maintaining this is, 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 is really, really hard. As you can see, it, it grew like really fast. Like I joined somewhere around here. Maybe that's my bump here. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then, then just it kept growing. I don't know. Uh, uh, I haven't been touching it for the last two years, actually. But then somehow we, two of us, with Heiko, who's another contributor, he's at UCL, like University College London. He and I started like actively doing it for the last half a year. Uh, so yeah, there's many lines of code currently, as you see, like well, still a lot. Yeah, Jesus. Uh, we want to cut down a lot. You see here the mixture of things we have. You have some Python thing going on. That's because of the build system we have. Uh, it's it's a mess. And uh, yeah, other than that, it's mostly C++ as you can see. And then like, what are we as well? Like a community. So there's another. Uh, number around here, and yeah, I'm, I'm gonna talk about data science soon. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, so yeah, here are the code comments going on. Like their comments is high, and like contributors like roughly like 175, uh, give or take. I think there's gonna be 150. This is like some statistics of like two people with different aliases and stuff. Um, anyhow, so what we want to intend to do is to like, w was always to, to to stop this religion about language. Because like most of the data scientists are like super opinionated about like R or Python. That's the biggest two things going on between them. Or, or then some people are like at least talking about Java. Uh, and JavaScript is quite nice. I have many opinions about it. No hard feelings here. Uh, so I, I'm just wondering like how, how many people use this here like Python like, is, like most regularly? Okay, R. Okay, this is a bit fewer, and and like, what? C hmm? C sharp. C sharp. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's very rare. Awesome. Uh, that's actually a good language. I love that language. Damn that it's it didn't pick up as good as like Java. Java? Anybody? Okay. Okay. There's few. Cool. So anyhow, like these are like how they are like interacting with each other. You can see that most of the people are like very opinionated of their own language, and then they keep using it. And then whatever happens, uh, the, my problem is that like I have a couple of comments here like about Python. Are you serious that an object is a hash map? Sorry. Like, that's, that's a no-go. R, I never could have used to, to, the, to, the, to the syntax. I'm sorry. Like, I, my brain doesn't compile with that. Java is awesome. I use daily Java, but like when there's GC in the JVM, I, I just get very, very crazy. I used to work for a recommendation engine uh, 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 company, and we had all the stack in JVM, and we had to do many, many tricks about, because everything was JVM, we had to do tricks about like being able to reach the SLAs we had to agree on. So that, that is a no-go. And then C++ is there you go. I love that. But, but then again, somebody hates it. So, uh, so let's go back. So what, what interfaces we support? So there's like a library called Swig, S-W-I-G. And this is why we, we, want that, like, we want interfaces for all. So we don't care about your language. We, we, we want to like, help you. But the problem is that like, especially with the scripting languages like Python, you, you can really fastly go to, to a level of arriving to a good model. But then, if you try to take this to anywhere in production, you are doomed. Like that's like I've been through like a couple of companies of they're trying to do this. Like they have a Python stack, and they try to bring that into production. It's it, it, and yeah, dynamic typing. I'm too old for that. I don't know how about you, but like whatever comes in, whatever comes back, it's scary in production. Uh, same with R and speed, especially like both of the cases. Like the runtime is is, is horrendous for for sim simple simple uh, uh, what is it operations. You don't want to know what's happening. Lua, I love that language actually. Lua is cool. Ruby, uh, yeah, Ruby. Uh, Java or anything JVM we support, uh, C sharp as I said, and in, in progress we're doing JavaScript. Actually, like like if you look around JavaScript, it's like I don't know why data scientist is not picking up on JavaScript. Like that's vastly faster than than Python and R. Okay, you don't have the supporting libraries, but but it's it's much better. Like a V8, it's 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 amazing. 
Anyhow, uh, we, we support all these languages. And uh, how we do that is basically, uh, let's look at it here. So we have the SWIG, as I said. And then SWIG helps us to automatically generate uh, uh, um, interfaces to any languages. So we basically meta, we show the meta information to SWIG, and it automatically generates all the, all the language interfaces you need. And then right away, you can use it. So here, this is our, like, in October, we released this new feature that's like, here's the website where you can check. This is just like a handful of algorithms you see here. I don't know, like any opinions about like what do you want to see? No, okay. Then this is obviously my favorite, the support vector machines with kernels. Uh, so yeah, it's a simple, like here, here's the optimization for you, like the primary objective, here are the subject to things. I am not going to go into the mass details. And on here, here's the example. In, in this is currently in Python. That like what is the code you need? So you get your features. You cr create your features. This is actual code you write in type in Python. It's going to work. You create your Gaussian kernel. You stuck it into a libsvm. Set the epsilon if you want. You do the training. Do applying the binary classification. Get the bias and do some ac ac accuracy measures. Right. Same thing. Ah uh, yeah, Octave. I forgot totally. So Octave. Who knows Octave? Wow. Yeah, yeah, MATLAB. Yeah, we actually, we are currently working on MATLAB interface. There's some guy doing on the Swig extension for MATLAB, and it's really good. It's just need time, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, Octave, the same, like, it's, you see, like, this is all, everything works as is. So we have, like, these meta, in the, in meta examples that we then transcribe. In, so we bu built a framework, actually, for this, that we have meta examples that we transcribe into any languages. And then you regenerate you this, basically, this example. And as well, these are actually generated the codes that are doing integration tests over us so that actually we see that all the mappings between every languages are actually doing the same thing that they're supposed to do. Uh, side note. Yeah, you see the R if you want. R library, uh, the native C++ implementation using, uh, this is using some C++ 11 extensions. Awesome stuff, so yeah. Uh, and then like, you know, like you can, ha and here are some of the other uh, algorithms, random forest, usual suspect, right? Actually, this is like our strong side, Wu, uh, who's currently in Japan. Uh, he's doing our, basically the whole stack of Gaussian processes. Anybody heard about Gaussian processes? So I, I like I love it I love it, it except the fact that then you that you have to invert a matrix yeah that that's that's a bit shitty part but like there's ways around it but I love that because you get like a density function for your classification as well awesome stuff so he he wrote like our library actually regarding Gaussian processes is like the the more most full implementation of Gaussian processes at the moment. And you're going to see, you, you, you can check benchmarks around it. He wrote like a whole IPython notebook about it, how much faster it is compared to any other implementation out there. Actually, the, the one good implementation in Gaussian processes he started to use was, was in MATLAB, by the way. Uh, anyhow, so, so we use, like you can use any of these interfaces. The only problem is that like if you go here and check how you have to use us, it's, it's getting, getting messy, like really messy. So that's why we started to go around and we were thinking about what should we do about it. So uh, Shogun Cloud, yeah, it, 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 it is something that, that existed before. It was written by me over like a weekend of when Docker was like, just a new thing. You, I hacked together a Flask application, and then like it brought up Docker containers on my own machine, and then like I had to randomly kill people out because we were running out of instances. Anyhow, so uh, the thing is that like Shogun was used and currently used at UCL as an ag education, like actually for teaching master students in in data science. And here, like, we have, like, a, a showcase of, of different, like, a longer explanations about different algorithms you, you, you like or you want to learn about it and how to use Shogun to actually use it. It's with IPython notebooks, but with now with Jupyter, you can do much better things, actually. So, uh, I don't know. Like, this is a simple introduction to, to for example, uh, okay, wait, so... 
Yeah, I'll, I'll just, sh so it's a simple interaction about the, the machine learning, what it's all about, how you get in a data set, what does the definition of a data set, that it's features and labeling, and what is the label set, all sorts of things. And then, like, is it binary classification? Is it, like, regression? Is it, like, a, maybe a clustering if it's un unsupervised? And then, like, you can learn here how about to, to load in Shogun and how to learn more about your data. So you can do the pre-processing, as you heard. Like, like it's very important to do some feature extractions or, or actually dimension reductions, because sometimes your data is just so big that you can't handle it. Uh, and then, or not, I mean, your machine can't handle it or your algorithm. And then here you see like basic uh, examples about, like I think it's about like uh, plasma glucose concentration and, and how they are being uh, classified uh, using a LibSVM. Uh, so yeah, and then here's like the classification uh, again, like the density, and then the boundary. This is the boundary that it learned the LibSVM, obviously, and uh, yeah, you get the accuracy of seventy three percent. It's always in context how good that is, uh, and then <laughs> um, yeah, well, something is something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a housing data set as well there. I think it's like, you know, like it's pretty simple stuff. Like if you know some data science, then you are not so much interested in this one. If you're just a starter, it helps you. And obviously this is just like a actual generated HTML of an IPython notebook that you can actually use and modify and, and see how it goes. And then like you have the KNN for clustering, for example, clustering people, clustering, I think here, the example is about clustering numbers, like you see numbers, images, I want to recognize them, want to see how they fit. Uh, then a nice autoencoder again over the same data set. I think this is USPS or something like that. And, sorry? Yeah, that, that is, NIST as well, USPS has the same kind of thing. They have like a data set of like, I think written numbers and then like that's it. Uh, then, then here, I think this is a quite nice comparison of like how, like what, what's linear SVM, what's a, what's a kernel SVM. You see like if your data is like this and you have a linear um, uh, SVM, which is basically don't know how to else to put the hyperplane around this because it has to be linear, meaning like a, a straight line. Then what to do, what to do, you take the kernel machine and then it's awesome because you get this, but then you pay a huge price over memory and runtime actually, but nobody tells you this in the beginning. So it all looks amazing. Uh, again, like many, many kernels, the difference is you can learn here about many things, about like uh, naive base, how it works, uh, and more explanation over it. Bugs, 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 bugs. Yes, we are open source, so if you see a bug and you hate it, come back, come with the PR, fix it, please, please. We will be very happy. Uh, and then, then some Gaussians, awesome, here, good. Probability likelihood, and then you can kind of generate this. Very nice stuff. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details because you can read it or not. Like, I'll just show my two favorite examples. Like this is a very simple blind source separation over audio files with, with independent component analysis. It it's, has been written by somebody from Canada as a Google Summer of Code project. And I mean, just the whole backend as well, this, this thing, and it, it's like, I really like it. So what he does is like, he, he wants to show you like how you can like, if you have a mixed signal and you want to like get out like, the, like somehow to be able to separate the signals and get back the information because it was a noisy, then you can think about images, uh, sound, as well as data, right? It doesn't matter. It's any kind of data. Then he shows an example how can you do this. And here, this is just a basic implementation that shows you that he's going to do, like, anybody is, like, recognizing Good day, Commander. this. <laughs> OK. So StarCraft, of course. Uh, so he took, took three different signals from StarCraft. And this is it. Like, you load in the data. And this is just the representation. I mean, here it was the representation of the in the UI. Never mind that. Again, you get the third, second, sig second signal, and the third signal. Right? You have these three different signals, and then you define a, a nice mixing matrix over it. So what you take, you take the signals and you mix them together separately on purpose. You hear? And then like, this is not. 
yeah, another signal mixing and the third one. So ideally, this is what you get. You get this mix of signals, right? And then somehow you would like to be able to separate them. Like, find, get an algorithm that uh, actually can do it. And then like, you will realize that, like, wow, you can actually do this. Like, there's an algorithm for this, and you can do this. So you get in trouble, you get the signals, you get the mixed signals as like features, right? It's just random. Like, it's, it's, it's a byte series. Nobody cares. And then you convert it. And you get, take Jade, it's an ICA, independent component analysis. And then this is your estimated mixing matrix over there, over the input. And then this is it. We just plot back the things, and this is the first signal. You want a piece of me, boy? You want a. Uh, Good day, Commander. Good day. And uh, the third oh, one. So these are all like, this actually happened with. With the input, so it's not not like we took the other input. So it's <laughs> it, it, it is working, and uh, and my other stuff like it's from Sergey. Sergey is like at the moment at Yandex. He's he's an amazing coder. I, I love to to meet him because you can just like wow, you can learn so many good things from him. So he wrote this library like Tapkey, and Tapkey is currently I don't know like it's a header only library. If you know what that means, that's awesome stuff, like Eigen. And, uh, and it, it is all about pre-processing, all about unsupervised pre-processing of your data, namely dimensional reduction. So obviously, like, uh, you have sometimes like feature space of, like, I saw somebody saying uh, like 100,000 features, and that's like, I don't understand what do you get out of that. But yeah, like huge feature spaces, and like there's obviously some data sets that cannot handle that. Not data sets, like machine learning libraries that cannot like handle that. So what he wrote like is a full set of like different dimensional reduction algorithms, where it automatically detects it and somehow un unfolds your 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 input. Like you'll see here, for example, that do you see this? Like it's a spiral, but it's a 3D spiral, right? And your data, it, it, like the color of the data, meaning like it's a different type of labeling of the data. You could represent it like that. And uh, so this is this is the three-dimensional representation of it. This is just the cut in, in in one way, and this is the actual unfolding into two dimension automatically. Like just here, here's the here's your target dimension for the isomap, and boom, you got that. It's it's awesome. It's really nice. Uh, same goes here. Like you have these spirals here, and you just say like it's it's a stochastic proximity embedding, and as you get the two dimensions, you get it straight out there. So like any any time further, I will don't want to go now because yeah, uh, I actually wanted to show you that that so Shogun Cloud. Why I was talking about like we have this many many IPython notebooks and like we have this huge library. Like nobody touches it nowadays because everybody is doing like Spark. Uh, what else is hip today? What 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 what's a hipster thing now with with data science? Pandas, yeah, probably yeah those those stuff, awesome stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry, I can't I can't hold it back. I can't hold it back. It's no no. I, it this is a complete crap. Like like there's so many bugs in it. But I just do it out of passion. But at least when we write some code that is. Like it, it's meant to be like somewhere near to performance. Uh, sorry about that. So, uh, so the problem is that there's a huge entrance barrier for everybody. Installation, understanding C++, understanding how do you get the, the library yourself into your own language, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a problem with that, and we understand that. So that's why one time I tried to fix that, but then like, OK. We need to fix this. We need to do something that people can start using it because it is insane that we are people trying to use random forest for trend detection. Like, please, please, <laughs> come on. And and XGBoost is like yeah for everything, right? Okay. Uh, so release date is now. Like today here, Shogun Cloud for you. Thanks to AWS. If you have any tools, please. Uh, Go to this place. You need just your GitHub account and, and log in. Uh, what you get here is is the following. It's disclaimers warning. Currently, data is not persistent. So if you use the, anything, it, you're gonna lose it. It's only Python two. Uh, 
because I'm, we are using IPython, but it's in Jupyter, so I'll show you later. And it's running on spot instances, so it's yellow square because <laughs> nothing is persisted and all is gone. So make sure that you keep on downloading shit. No, no, but it's going to get fixed uh, till next week, till post Asia for sure. Uh, so like anything further to do, like what you get is this. So you, this is the, the Cloud Shogun um, implementation, Cloud Shogun, you go in, you log in. This is the data, sample data sets we're gonna be using for our demos and then here you see all the, come on, come on, come on. Why is it so slow? So all the, all the IPython notebooks inside that, that I was just showing, like parts of it, and uh, yeah. And then like, let's go to the one, I guess, everybody liked. Do we do the, the same thing or, or do we do the, the image version of it? Right, let's do the audio, I knew that worked. I don't know if the Im image is going to work actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, so come on, why is it so slow? YOLO. Yeah, it is, it is. No, but it's AWS, it's AWS. It should not be. It's not our fault. Okay, wrong format, doesn't matter. Okay, as I said, make sure that, that uh, your kernel is not Python 3, which it will be by default. So you just switch to Python 2, it will start up the, the kernel. And da, 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 da. and then you hear, you see, like this is the same notebook, but it, it has not been yet ex executed. And what you can do is just go in cell, run all, or run like you know manually one by one, see what's happening. And uh, did I push it? Yeah. And there you go. It's currently running all the, yeah, there's the signals. And that's it. This was on the fly doing the same thing. So you get all this in, in the cloud. You can use it uh, with with those restrictions, uh, which which I hopefully gonna be able to. I mean, I did this today, right? Like this cloud thing. It's like it's it just like in the afternoon I put it together. That like we need something, but like now, like it's 2017. Many many things are changed, and many many things are much easier than it used to be in 2011 when I did did the first version of it. Uh, so yeah, and then. Shogun in the real world, and then I was thinking like, okay, who's, because I'm, I'm usually getting this question like, who is using you? Like, we are like, uh. <laughs> uh, there are rumors about people <laughs> doing stuff in places where we get like, okay, so like, I think the, I, there was somebody in Hong Kong who wanted to use it, but we never got a reply for why. And then, like, as I said, like many, many research areas, like, like we have a lot, tons of people coming, like, especially because the first part was indented, like most of the implementation for biogenomics. So you have a lot of tools for that that is not available anywhere else. So people are still doing that, they come use Shogun. And then, um, then for example, the weirder stuff as a request, like I, that we know that something fishy is going on, that, uh, there is actually currently a bug somewhere down in the representation of the matrices that uh, we only use a 32-bit for, for indexing uh, the matrix. Uh -oh. <laughs> and then we were asking like, but what is that machine that you have that you need a memory that like you can index a 64-bit? And he's like, yeah, it's a big one. And like, okay, yeah, and what's the data? <laughs> like, like, but then again, I currently work in that feature, and that feature branch is like open, so you can use it and or help fixing it. But yeah, like currently, like actually, like that's that's nowadays getting more and more popular. View, I heard it many times. Like in the last three months, I heard in the conversation at least four times the idea of everybody's like Hadoop scale. Uh, uh, Horizontally, uh, do you know like the price range is currently about like a terabyte of RAM? Because it's not that much if you compare it to your, your Hadoop cluster. So if you take like a Hadoop cluster with all the nodes and you can like super horizontally scale, you will have the bottleneck of super GCing of Spark 
which like they did even like a breaking change into 1.6 that like half of Spark was just GCing all the time. Uh, you got the bottleneck of your network. Uh, it's awesome to store data, but if you really want to do this kind of stuff, honestly, if you have a terabyte of data, it's not that except, expensive. You might get much faster somewhere than with your Spark setup. But non, non, I don't want to, like again, I use Spark on a daily basis. So I'm not saying that it's a shit. I'm just saying that there needs to be some understanding of the limitation of the two. So real world, back to the story. Was it a real word? I don't know. So I'm going to talk a little bit of the segmentation I did for my own PhD. And this is what I used for doing that. So, so usually I, I didn't, did much stuff in, in medical image processing. And uh, the usual problem is that you do like, you get like patients and uh, the, the radiologist time is super expensive. Like super expensive that like they are like optimizing everywhere in the world to try to get like one extra person to be examined, like the, only the records of examined to by, by, a, by a radiologist. So like, if you can help anyhow to guide the radiologist's work, that's a super important thing. So usually that's why we do seg automatic segmentation, automatic like detection of, of malignant points, whatever, in the, in the lungs, in the hippocalamus, wherever you want. So like this example is talking about what, what this part of my work was about like segmentation of hippocalamus and the, these lungs. So you get like, this is like, opinions of, of different radiologists and they are like superimposed, like this is the median of it, or no, mean of it, sorry. And so in, inside here you have the heart, the two lungs, the pelvics, and you, we wanted to learn, like we wanted to give like, uh, create uh, with a colleague of mine a segmentation framework that allows you to not only use on this, but as well use on, on, on other fields because every segmentation method is awesome on one particular organ and really bad on others, uh, other organs. And we wanted to create a, a segmentation framework that auto-tunes for this. So, uh, so basically what, what we started first, the idea is that like, first let's make an organ detection system that like we can detect like where is this organ and what is this organ. And if we can do that, then we can choose like the set of like algorithms we have for the segmentation. And uh, that's it, like it's going to be much better, right? I don't know, like, so the thing is that I wrote the, the part in Shogun, like it's a latent uh, structural SVM. I didn't know if you know it, if you don't know it, it's some fancy stuff, doesn't matter. It's the same stuff you can do in deep learning nowadays with TensorFlow, I believe in minutes that I spent months. <laughs> so, yay. <laughs> uh, anyhow. So yeah, I used the part-based detection. It's, it was like super, super uh, popular at that time, like for in, doing detection of people, objects, whatever on the images. And then what, what we had an idea that as soon as we have the detection of the organ, we, we can actually specify areas of the organ itself because each segmentation method works much better if you're capable of saying, showing where is the prior, meaning where is the area which is inside and which is the area that is outside of the organ. Because either you're going to do a graph cut or a, or a level set of segmentation, doesn't matter. If you have the prior, it's going to grow nicely and better and you can like shape it runtime. Uh, so anyhow, like we, I learned that model and of course we made the state of the art better than the state of the art. We were all happy. These are the results that you get. These are like the green area is the, is the correctly detected area. The red area is the the incorrectly undetected area, and there's, I don't know if there's yellow, and this is, this is false, right? So that's it, like, that's what I was doing, it was awesome, and then it's all in Shogun, nobody uses it, I suppose. Uh, and then, like, here is my, any, it's like, is there anybody here from, like, who's a student, like, a university student? Yay, cool, so I'm talking to you. <laughs> Uh, just quickly, sorry for the rest of you. So Google Summer of Code, like you, you get like uh, we are an accepted organization. Uh, you get three months of work. You apply to us with with some ideas, or we have some ideas. You show us how you are, how your how's your skills, and uh, if you get in, if you choose, if we choose you, then you get like five thousand five hundred dollars U.S. dollars for your work for three months during the summer. Uh, there are some project ideas that I show here, like it's, it's on the wiki. I think I'm running out of time, right? Uh, long time ago. 
Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm not stopping you. And the application deadline is 4th of April, so please do apply if you want. Uh, it's a, I, I loved it. I did this twice. Uh, once with, with Og, yeah, so SIF, which is a really good media framework uh, back in 2010. And once, uh, then I joined Google, no, no, I joined uh, Shogun the first time with my Summer of Code a bit prior to that. It's really good stuff. Like you can really like do, do really good things on your own, and and nobody really constrains you. Only your mentor tries to help you how to make things better. And uh, send us your PRs, and we'll review them and like just send in your application, and hopefully it, it will all work out, and you'll understand why we like it so much because it's it's a really good thing. Like uh, we we kind of like I have a feeling that uh, the people who get out like usually we get like. People like Pan, just like a girl from, from, from China, but she's now living in New York. She jo joined us like last year, like Google Summer of Code. Uh, we chose her because she seemed to be like, like willing to do things, but then when we were seeing her code, it was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you were like, oh my, oh my God, where are we? And like, oh, what are we gonna do with her? But now she's like a, a core contributor. Like she had like zero understanding of C++ at the time. Like literally zero understanding. And now she, she, she actually ended up writing half of, rewriting half of the linear algebra stuff where we can like on runtime choose between the GPU, CPU, and like mix that and vice versa. Uh, and she all write that templated in, in C++. And she's currently a core member, um, not because we are desperate of finding new members, <laughs> really not. Like she, she did an amazing job, and and like we did this a couple of times, and we feel that like if you join, you do this job, which is not actually a job because it's an experience. There's a lot to learn about not only like like your job because I guess some people joining this is they, that's what they're job is, I suppose. And then, but as well, you learn about open source communities. And what does it mean? How do we work? And how are you su supposed to interact with them? Because I hate it when somebody comes into to the channel and says like, this is a shit. It doesn't work. It doesn't compile. Fix it. <laughs> And you are like, OK, yeah, we are working on this the last, I don't know, five years. Thanks a lot for your contribution. Bye. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really good. And, and, and I'm, I'm set to see nowadays more and more projects are like, uh, yeah, I mean, like Apache work, projects, I guess, they work out nicely. That they, they, they not only being used, but they are being contributed back a lot of time, or like some projects being generated to be an Apache project. But there are many, many projects I see dying slowly, slowly, because companies just take it but never give back, which is like sad because like many, many good things just started off with open source things. Your kernel in your Linux, right? right. Okay, that's it. Sorry about like overrunning, <laughs> and and I'm sorry if there was not too much data science in here. Uh, a round of applause for Peter. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Shogun also, right? A more deeper dive or something. Yeah, right? it will be much bit more explain, like yeah. going in details about data science yeah. actually, and and then we're gonna persist yeah. stuff. In this this is like a preview, and yes. And, and honestly, this is exactly what Force Asia is 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 all about. Is trying to get. Uh, trying to get more of uh, the companies out there, trying to get people on the ground to with you guys to help contribute back uh, to the community, to this kind of awesome projects. And that is really the sole purpose of what Force Asia is, is to actually give them the opportunity to showcase their open source projects, even though if you have any open source projects that you're working on, I'm working on an open source project, uh, just me and someone else. A very small open source project, you know, and then we have Shogun, we have ASUS, we have uh, Accelerator R, you know, like corporate companies also uh, doing their own open source projects. So 
And this is one of the things that we, we are trying to promote and get more people uh, hopefully to contribute back. And also at Force Asia, uh, during the summit in next week on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, we have a lot of uh, amazing people flying down from US, uh, from Europe, from Asia, all the different people, even from Singapore, we have a few speakers around here also that are speaking. Who is speaking for what, at Force Asia? Yeah? All right, all those who are raising their hands, yes. Thank you very much uh, for contributing to the open source community and sharing uh, your knowledge and your contributions to Force Asia or rather um, uh, to, to the conference itself. So I hope uh, if you have, if you would like to help contribute, if you can't even, if you can't go next week, uh, but you know that your company or your friends or your communities or whatever we have. Uh, we have still lots of uh, uh, pamphlets, brochures, things that you can stick up, stick up on your notice boards. Uh, if you have in your companies to share uh, this conference with everyone else, it's really, really cheap. Uh, for the community tickets, it's like what forty-two dollars, and that's over three days. And honestly speaking, uh, lunch, all three days lunches are provided, and that that's essentially what the forty-two dollars is for: is to pay for lunch. Uh, we don't make anything at all, right? <laughs> so with that, uh, I hope you enjoy uh, a preview, a sneak preview of what's going to come up in Force Asia Summit 2017 next week. Uh, the speakers will still be here for the next few minutes if you'd like to speak with them. Uh, but with that, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to have we're going to have uh, a supper.